So, um, I'm kind of busy today, so I don't really have time uh, to make a video. But, I wanted to make this video before this new news became old news. Um, particularly since it's that kind of news. Uh, today, the rumor mill started saying that Stephen Moffat would be writing and directing Star Wars 9. Um, I want to explain why that's a great idea and why I think that's a possibility. Um, so just bear with me on that. Uh, first of all, let's just get the, the first part out of the way, why it's a possibility. Um, we already saw a response sort of tweet from his wife, uh, Sue Vertru, um, saying that this is uh, news to him, that he's been, that he's officially directing Star Wars 9. Um, but I want to clarify what that means. Um, Stephen Moffat and his whole crew are kind of... Um, gun shy of making letting anything be announced that isn't uh, confirmed anything that's not an official announcement they're not a fan of doing things that way they don't like to do it that way and they don't do it that way uh, even um, in situations where um, something is confirmed there's a lot of times where they don't like to make that announcement they would prefer to have that be um, kept quiet for a while uh, I mean, obviously things come to mind such as uh, Paul McGon with the 50th anniversary celebration. Um, they denied sort of point blank that any uh, old Doctor Who doctors were making a return. Uh, in, in the face of sort of fan assault, a lot of people that were really unhappy about that decision and thought that was uh, improper. And as it, of course it turns out to please, you know, with, uh, to their pleasure, actually um, they did have one. They had Paul McGon. In the celebration. Um, next of all, a lot of people are going to say, well, the guy, you know, he's a showrunner of Doctor Who and of Sherlock, and he just doesn't have the time right now. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, just to clarify that one, let's just point out the fact that we're talking about Star Wars 9. We're not talking, we're not talking about Star Wars 7, we're not talking about Star Wars 8. Um, and so that's looking quite a bit down the ways. The earliest we could possibly see that would be uh, 2018, and I s don't see it happening that quickly. Stephen Moffat's already said, that uh, he's nearer to the end of his time of showrunner than to the beginning. Um, he's already been showrunner uh, about as long as Russell T. Davies has. Um, and he's talked a bit about uh, Series 9. So I think we can expect him to stay with Doctor Who through Series 9. But his commentary has always been that he's nearer to the end than he is to the beginning. And that um, he'll eventually have to stop doing Doctor Who as it stops him doing everything else. Sherlock, he says, is fine, that'll continue for a long time, because he writes, you know, one script in that a year, that's spread out with him and Mark Gatiss and uh, S Steve Thompson, um, but Doctor Who will come to an end at some point. Uh, further evidence about why he'll be free in time for Star Wars would be that he, he always pointed out how sort of the cruelty of the transition between Russell T. and himself, in which... The doctor left, the companion left, the showrunner left, the production team left. Everything was a big switchover, and that left him in a difficult position. So I think what we can safely say is that he'll do two full seasons with Peter Capaldi, and then he'll turn Peter Capaldi over to the next showrunner, who will continue with Peter Capaldi for a little while, in order to give the smoother transition that he wished that he had been able to have. Um, so I think that's what we're going to see um, in that department. Um... And then furthermore, uh, not to be cheesy, but the Doctor lies, rule number one. The Doctor um, and Stephen Moffat, for this comparison, don't feel the need to tell the truth in the way of sort of pleasing the audience. This is the storytelling device um, for his own sort of personal mythos. So um, those are reasons why I think Stephen Moffat's a possibility. Let me explain why I think it's a good idea. I don't think that Stephen Moffat would have been a terribly good idea for Star Wars 7, or probably for Star Wars 8. Uh, I wouldn't trust him with any of the spin-offs, because I'd be worried about where those would end up. Um, why he's good for Star Wars 9, there's a few very specific reasons that I'd like to discuss. Um, first of all, what we've seen is his ability to take an existing mythology and... Um, play with it and make it fun and exciting and surprising. Take something that you know really well and then make it into something which feels new and uh, unexpected. 
uh, when he tries to build a mythology from scratch with no sort of um, basis underneath it, he can go out in crazy places, uh, maybe beyond what is a great thing. I think uh, sort of Wedding a River Song is an example of that, where when we saw it, uh, a similar plot device happen in uh, the Pandorka Opens and the Big Bang, it was building off of something that we were prepared for, it was uh, laid down with rules that existed in Doctor Who, and it was something that was incredibly surprising and original. With Wedding of River Song, it became a sort of a, a self-referencing thing and became a little bit messy. Um, furthermore, if you look at what Disney is most likely to do, based on the fact that Disney is a massive machine, and I don't see it in their agenda to do anything terribly uh, surprising in their in their end of the of the process. So I think what we can expect from Disney is a, an attempt to um, replicate the successful structuring of the original Star Wars trilogy. So I think with Star Wars Seven, they're going to be looking at um, a comparatively standalone uh, adventure film that introduces us to the characters and gets us acquainted with them and makes us care about the struggles that they're going to go through. And it's it's comparably self-contained. I think you're going to look at uh, something that's going to introduce the big struggle, but it's going to be focused upon a smaller initial struggle, which will be resolved within that picture. I think with Star Wars 8, they're going to go the Empire Strikes Back route. I, I It worked for Empire Strikes Back. It works for um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's a, it's a system which works um, in which you establish the characters in the first one. You you and then in the second one, you you separate them apart, take them away from each other, um, and put them in the very very worst predicament you can possibly get them into. And then for the third installment, they get out. That's George Lucas's own words on sort of uh, the trilogy structure of drama. Um, and so we'll be looking towards a, a, a darker, more serious, um, more sort of cold middle chapter. Um, and so. What the Return of the Jedi should be, and in its best moments was, was the getting out part. It should be incredibly, it should be uh, exciting and fast-paced and surprising, and um, and it should be playful. It should be a triumphant, you know, last hurrah, and it should uh, deliver on things in a way that's big and bold and surprising. And um, Based upon Stephen Moffat's track record, I think he'd be right for writing that kind of installment. I think the one that uh, provides a, a clever conclusion, um, surprises, uh, adventure, uh, humor, I think that's where Star Wars 9 needs to go. And that will remind people why they love Star Wars by giving them uh, a, a movement forward with something that's distinct and um, uh, sends the, 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 the new trilogy out on a bang. Um, additionally, uh, something that was great about the best Star Wars films, Star Wars, we have to call them four now, four and five, the, the, you know, the, the number of sequences, dumb. Um, but what made, a lot of what made those great was just the wonderful sort of snappy, sarcastic dialogue. It's wonderful banter. It's just brilliant banter. And one of the things that really weighed down the prequels and what made them just such a pain to watch, what makes them so hated, is largely that they just have some of the worst dialogue ever written. Whereas if you look at Stephen Moffat's track record with Sherlock and uh, his best work with Doctor Who, you're looking at someone that can write um, incredibly clever dialogue, uh, using it for character development, using it for plot, but making it just so you have so much fun uh, listening to these interactions that it doesn't become some sort of expository chore, it becomes something that breezes past. And if any exposition goes down in the talking, you don't notice it because you're paying attention, you're just having too much fun. Um, so I think what we're looking at is someone, Stephen Moffat, who's had an incredible track record with Sherlock, with Doctor Who, uh, who's worked with Spielberg on 1010, which, not wild about it, but that being said, he's worked with Spielberg, that's a pretty good credential for Star Wars. Um, and additionally, I think what we can see from the denial of his commitment to it is the fact that they came out and they addressed it immediately. Um, this rumor came out today, and it was rebutted today. That's not common. Um, they're not the type to get on the internet and read through the rumors. Um, 
and find out what's being said about them. So this is fire, fire uh, control. So it says to me that conversations have been had. And whether they fell through or whether they're ongoing, I don't know. But it, it's apparent to me that it's, it's like someone with a guilty conscience. If anything's mentioned within the subject matter, the, the first on it to say something about it. And that's what we're looking at with this rumor. So uh, give me your comments. Let me know what you think, whether you think that he'd be a horrible showrunner, if you're the, sort of the same old uh, overcomplicated uh, and sexist arguments that everyone likes to make about Stephen Moffat's writing, which I should make a video about that soon, since I don't agree, and I think that I can uh, defend a disagreement with that contention pretty fairly. Anyways, let me know what you think, and uh, let me know if you have a better idea for Star Wars 9. Um, I can say again, Edgar Wright should be directing Star Wars 7, and if he's not directing Star Wars 7, he should be directing Star Wars 8 or Star Wars 9. Basically, Edgar Wright should be directing a Star Wars movie, specifically a numbered episode movie, not a standalone, because Edgar Wright is the right man for the job. But um, Disney and Edgar Wright are not on the best terms right now, so we won't be seeing that happening terribly soon. Um, but that's a little bit off topic. So let me know your thoughts, and uh, I'll make some more videos soon.